when I was 13, 14, 15 in that age range, um, it became apparent that something was developing or happening for me that seemingly was different from the people around me. One of the things that I realized, and now it's really informative as an adult when I look back on it, is the Jerry Springer show. I would find myself really engaged in watching that over and over, trying to make sense and understand what it was about the people who were primarily on that show, which at the time, were, it was a lot of trans folks, right? But that the experience of the trans folks were horrible. There was a violence, it was acceptable violence, it was um, clouded under the idea of like, people are deceiving people. I think that stuff kind of got internalized for me, which then um, maybe impacted my ability to talk about my gender that it took so long. So I identified as a lesbian um, at around 15 and then all the way up until I was 30. I was part of a community and it was great. Lesbian community, amazing and wonderful. Um, and while I felt part of it, there was also a piece that I always felt a little outside of it. I suffered from a lot of things that a lot of trans folks suffer from trying to cope um, that created um, chaos and it created difficulties and barriers um, in my development. And when I think back of kind of that time and that process, I think that um, the things I, were, I was exposed to through Jerry Springer, uh, because it was really my only place to get information, um, impacted me in ways that I didn't even understand at the time. I didn't have a lot of conversations with my lesbian friends um, because I didn't even know, I didn't even know how to have the conversation. And then as I came out, you know, as I got into my 20s and I did start talking about my gender, my community were lesbians. Like that was who my people were. And the reactions and responses were interesting. Um, the, there were people who I felt like maybe I was putting words to experience they also understood and had, um, but weren't quite ready to, to kind of step into that. And then there were people who my experiences for them felt so far away that they actually didn't even really know how to, how to be there in that space because it was so antithetical to kind of the way that they understood their gender and sexuality in the context of um, their life. When I transitioned, um, I transitioned into white masculinity and that's not nothing, especially in the time in which we um, have uh, we are deeply divided. Um, I have I transitioned 10 years ago and I didn't understand it at the time, but over the last 10 years, walking in the world as a non-identifiable white, seemingly heterosexual guy um, is different than the experiences of folks who transition into femininity or folks who are negotiating um, institutional and systemic racism. I realize that things are easier for me because I am white, and because I am a guy and people don't know that I'm trans unless I tell them. I am a six foot two white guy. It doesn't really get any easier than that. And, and so the, the movement into privilege that I have as a, as a, as a white man is that I also um, I get to say things. I have permission to say things. Even if people don't agree with me, there is much more space for me to say what I think and what I feel and what I want with little to no consequences. And prior to transition, when I was sort of being in the world as a woman or being seen as such, um, whether it was self-imposed or is an actuality, there's just less space. The ultimate goal for me was really about becoming a licensed clinical social worker. Um, which actually I, I just became last week. Um, I finally was able to pass the exam, which is great and remarkable. For me, social work is not just a profession, it's an identity, it's a commitment to live my life in a very specific and intentional way um, that, that uh, is 24 seven. Um, and, and social work is not for everyone and so, not all social workers live that, but, but I do. And, and because I'm a social worker that has focused all of my work around trans and queer folks and experiences, um, it, it goes well because I'm both trans and queer. So it works out that I get to kind of adhere to my belief system around a social work um, because I live it. It's my personal life as well. The things I talk about, the conversations that I have, um, it brings people to a different thought process around it, what it means to be trans and what it's like to have experiences of gender dysphoria. It's a diagnosis. It's a billable code that's found in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, right? Which is in and of itself problematic, um, which is a whole other 
tirade. Um, but what happens is that, that people think about and experience gender dysphoria in a very um, reductionist way, right? It's the experience of like, I'm physically uncomfortable and so I need to do something. And that's true. That's absolutely true. And for a lot of folks, that something is medical transition to physically create congruency of, of your body. The idea of that, though, is that once you transition and you have whatever medical intervention that you want, the, the, the false idea is that now you no longer have gender dysphoria. And that's not true. Um, you have what I have sort of coined as gender dysphoria noise. It is, it are the, it's the things that occur on a day-to-day -day basis, hour-by-hour -hour basis, and sometimes minute-by-minute -minute basis that is the experience of trans folks. And, and that has been a conversation that has not been happening. You don't see it represented in the literature. You don't see people doing research on it. It's just an absent idea. So I think that me talking about that and me bringing that idea forth has allowed people to say, much like I needed, it has created language for people to organize an experience around, to communicate, this is what's happening for me. And so I feel really proud about that, that, I, that I've been able to do that, but also then bringing that into the world of clinicians who are providing care and mental health.